right. Welcome to my presentation on throat singing around the world. Uh, first up, we have Mongolian kumi, um, which uh, kumi and throat singing was thought to originate in Mongolia in the Kovid province that is marked on the map. Um, and they have different styles that were based on different part of the mouth and the chest cavity. Um, labial, lips, palatal, uh, this upper part of the mouth, glottal, throat, chest cavity, and turlegged. Um, this one was combined with a long song, um, which is basically just a song where they stretch out the syllables a whole ton. Uh, Old Man and the Bird is three hours if you sing it at full length with its complete stanzas. Moving on to Tuvan throat singing. Um, they have a different spelling of kumi, kume. Um, it's a little bit different technique wise, but uh, they, it, it originates from their ancient pastoral animism and singers will often go into the countryside looking for places to sing to create the proper environment. Uh, the first one that we have in this video here is called Kagera. It's a low growling and they use false vocal cords in order to get lower fundamental tones. Tibetan monks also share a similar style. Up next we have Sigit, which means whistling. They sing a mid-range fundamental a little bit higher now. And um, it, they use flute-like harmonics by sealing the tongue on the roof of their mouth and moving it backwards and forwards to get different partials of the harmonic scale. <laughs> Up next, we have Sardina. This is an island off the coast of Italy. Um, there are two types of singing on the island, concordu, which is sacred music, and tenore, which is profane music, where the bottom two voices use this overtone style to produce even lower fundamentals of pitch. And there's the four different singers, boce, mezzo boce, contra, and basso. Next, uh, the last two traditions that we're going to talk about are actually traditions that are part of the women's culture. In South Africa, the Thembu Kosa women, um, much like lots of African music, call and response and complements meters and polyrhythms. This one that we're hearing here is in five, I believe. <laughs> tradition that probably lots of people know about with throat singing are uh, native to our own continent, the Inuit. Um, this was also a women's tradition that was thought to form when men were away on hunting trips. Um, it's a lot about entertainment value and they play games with the different rhythms and patterns that kind of make different counterpoints. Um, 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 um
And they're really just a loop that keeps going until somebody ends up laughing, coughing, or is out of breath. And that is my presentation. Any questions? And I abandoned my goal to Master Tuvan throat singing. Okay, I know I shouldn't ask, but what it is... Uh, Noah, can you throat sing? Not at all. Are you going to try? I really want to learn Kage right now. That yeah, sounds no, freaking not a cool. Mindset. Not at all yet. Not at all yet. So in the in the Italian one, um, you talk about like subtone stuff. Is that like like the bassoon overtone thing where like they they squeak and play two matching overtones and then that sounds lower or right. Um... So they'll sing a low fundamental, and then the overtone that they get is actually underneath the note they're singing. Like in the Kagera style. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's why it sounds so low and dense. <laughs> subharmonics? Yeah, like... like the, yeah, subharmonics. Yeah, people don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, they're real. They're real.